We're now joined by the French Transport Minister Jean-Baptiste Jobari, who is in Paris with us this morning. And, uh, sir, I know you're announcing a number of measures in terms of the air restrictions coming in and out of Belarus. But before we get to that, I want to ask you, you are a professional pilot by training. Uh, you know what the safety of a flight entails. How reckless, how dangerous would that, was that move that we saw divert in that plane? Well, it is called a forced diversion, and uh, basically, as a pilot, you want to ensure safety at all times. So, if you have false information, you are, um, in a way, you must comply to what's being told by the authorities. So, I appraise the, 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 the very utmost professionalism of the pilots for the, for the Ryanair flight, who, who did handle it uh, very well. But uh, uh, in case, in that case, the issue is uh, the unacceptable behavior of the Belarusian. Uh, authorities, and we'll get to the uh, section in a minute, I guess. And, and exactly. And, you know, I know that today you're putting forward a number of restrictions, especially when it comes to uh, the airspace from Belarus. What do those look like? Well, uh, so as you know, the uh, EU Council gathered last night, and uh, we have requested all airlines, and especially in France, all airlines operating in France, to avoid Belarusian airspace for until uh, further advised. And uh, I have suspended the uh, Belavia, which is the uh, Belarusian uh, operator. I have suspended the uh, operating uh, permit. And that suspension is that already in effect? Is that coming into effect today? Absolutely, it's coming uh, in effect today. This morning, uh, we had uh, two flights, one expected from, uh, uh, from Belarus to France, to Paris Charles de Gaulle, and one Air France flight uh, uh, supposed to depart from Paris to, uh, to, to Minsk, and both flights are cancelled for today. OK, and those flights are cancelled and no longer uh, operating. I wonder, you know, in your conversations with uh, Air France, what type of discussions are you having now? Well, uh, as we were saying initially, uh, we want to ensure safety at all times. So, of course, uh, the fact that we do not overfly uh, Belarusian airspace uh, will have uh, operational impact or consequences, uh, i.e. Uh, longer flight times. And uh, so we made sure last night that uh, everything was OK from a safety and operational point of view, and that's uh, totally under control. So, of course, uh, focus one is, uh, is security safety and security. And as you know, on Thursday morning, we will have a meeting at ICAO level uh, to see at international level with the civil aviation uh, organization if uh, further investigations uh, need uh, to be conducted. And, you know, in terms of that investigation, until now, yesterday, the Belarusian authorities said that this was about a bomb threat. At one point, they said it was Hamas that had done this. Based on what you heard, how credible are these explanations? Well, I can't go into uh, further details here, but uh, what I can say is, according to what we know, uh, it was a forced diversion of the Ryanair flight, so hence the sanctions that were uh, announced last night. And, Minister, you know, for European citizens that are watching this, some of which are probably shocked to know that this happened in the European airspace, you know, essentially a plane that gets hijacked mid-flight, how safe is the European airspace after the measures that you've taken last night? No, the European airspace is, uh, is very safe, one of the safest in the world, according to the safety records. But you're right to say it was an EU flight between, uh, between two uh, EU uh, countries. And uh, freedom of overflight is at the foundation of uh, international uh, air traffic management and rules, so to say. So it was very important that the uh, EU member states reacted very uh, quickly. And, uh, and uh, these sanctions are essential to, to keep confidence for the passengers, and once again, the uh, European airspace is safe. And, and, Minister, just to switch gears, because, of course, the summer is around the corner. There's a digital pass that is coming into effect, too, for tourists. France is also reopening for, for visitors, uh, as the coronavirus situation is now under control to some extent. The numbers are better. How ready are the airports to take in this inflow and, and also deal with that digital pass? Well, airports and, uh, and airlines are ready. What we are trying to do is uh, to resume international air travel by mid-June, 
for, for some flight corridors that are possible according to the sanitary situation. We are running some tests on the dig digital pass in France, in Corsica, in overseas territories. And uh, so we will, we will be ready. And as you know, at European level, the digital green pass must be approved by the end of June. So we are trying to resume international air travel as soon as possible. And I wonder, I know it's still early days, but do you have any numbers that you're targeting in terms of uh, passenger, passenger flow? No, it's, it's, it's difficult, but uh, what we are trying to achieve is to uh, resume international air travel between Europe and uh, America, Canada and, uh, and the U.S. Uh, we hope to uh, reopen also with uh, Africa, North Africa, and with some uh, Eastern countries. We think it will be difficult for, to, to reopen with China, as they have a very strict uh, COVID policy. But, uh, yeah, it's difficult to, uh, to, to, to say a few figures today, or to give a few figures today, but uh, this is the big, uh, the big blocks that we're trying to reopen. And Minister, just this final question, when you look at uh, Air France, KLM, you recently pumped more money into the company. The fact that the European economy is picking up and the borders are reopening, does it mean that this is the last aid that we're going to see from the French government into the company? Well, 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 we hope, uh, obviously, but uh, as you know, the, also the vaccination campaign is uh, progressing quite rapidly in, uh, in France, in Europe, in the U.S. and in some other countries. So um, we, we hope that there won't be a, a fourth wave uh, in autumn, but we have to be ready anyway. So we have to keep um, uh, vaccinating our, our population. We have to be really, really uh, careful with the the health of, of our systemic airlines, so to say. And uh, we are in France, as anywhere in Europe, supporting uh, all the uh, economic operators for transport uh, with the uh, utmost attention. Well, thank you so much, uh, Minister. That was uh, Jean-Baptiste uh, Jobaré joining us from Paris.